Hello, this is Michael, and I'm with Coma Music Magazine with Rasputin. Hello. Hello. Hi. So, Melora in particular, you've opened for some very well-known groups throughout the years, uh, but have since made an obvious effort to build Rasputina on your own. Uh, do you think you've made and kept more fans by opening for other bands or by doing it more of a uh, grassroots kind of effort? <clears throat> Definitely both because uh, uh, when we started we were on Columbia Records which was a big major label and they put uh, a lot of money into us to open for those people like Marilyn Manson. Like we got our own tour bus when we were just starting when nobody knew who we were. Um, and then when I stopped being with a big label, uh, I had a good foundation from all that touring we had done. So, uh, but then uh, it's been a lot of years that we've been touring hard as a headliner, so it's both. Also, to stay on the topic, because I'm such a huge fan of mindless self-indulgence, I just had to ask, what was the crowd like when you played with them? It kind of reminded me, you say Marilyn Manson, like, uh -huh. were the fans pelting things at you? It was it was similar. They're just really focused on on that group, and some people you can't really win them over. <laughs> I think that was the case then. I seem to be the one of uh, my friends introducing other friends to new, maybe unknown music, um, and people love comparisons. But the hardest band for me to compare to anything is Rasputina or mix with any other particular artist. Uh, who do I compare you to, and are there any bands you think you'd be best suited to tour with had you uh, the opportunity? Um, that might be a good question for the other guys, because yes, it's, it's really hard to uh, describe us in a quick phrase for people, and that says something good about our music, but it makes marketing difficult. Right. Guys, who should we play with? I don't know, because I have the same problem. Every time I tell people about, oh, I play, I play with Rasputina, and the only thing I can ever say is, it's, well, it's, <laughs> we play cello and it's amplified and it's rock, it's folk, it's, uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's been associated with goth, like I always never want to say, oh, it's goth cello rock, or it's alternative cello rock, or it's folk cello with singing, and I just think there are too many... Uh, genres, but it's kind of like all of those have come and gone. But the music has always been Melora and and her work, and had, that hasn't really changed. And so I think to me it's really difficult because it's like it's Rasputina. If you haven't heard it, then I you know you have to hear it. Then you know I have to let you listen to it. That's yeah, that's really the best way to do it. Just don't even try to label it. Just listen. Yeah. yeah. Do you know somebody that would be really Perfect for us to tour with somebody big, Neil Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I think that'll be fun. <laughs> but we did open for uh, uh, Gary Newman, and I thought that would have been a really great tour if we did the whole thing with him. I thought that was a really uh, great couple of shows. Like the crowds really could mesh. Yeah, they love, and then we found quite a few people at a couple of our shows that were at the Gary Newman shows. So they really liked what we did. In last year's interview you did with Coma Music Magazine that you might have barely been able to have heard, um, you said that when you were exposed to rock music, you wanted to know what made it tick. Yeah. Um, but now that you're kind of going away from rock, the rock sound, is there anything in particular that inspires you now? What, what you want to figure out? Well, I moved uh, out in the country from many, many years in New York City about five years ago. And since then, I have been really inspired by nature and want to capture and express beauty. And maybe that used to be embarrassing or uncool to me, but that, that is what I'm into now. And that's a challenge to how do you... How do you uh, you know, express that and make that happen. Anyone else? <laughs> Is there anything that makes you guys tick that you want to push on Melora and say, hey, let's do this? Uh, for me, like merchandise things, merchand we were always spitballing, hey, this would be a great merchandise idea. Spitballing? <laughs> I never heard him use that term before, ever. It's the way brainstorming. brainstorming. Yeah. I've <laughs> I think that's one of those crazy sex words, like Donkey Kong. 
That's what we're mostly inspired by. I got, I, I got that, I got that from uh, Strangers with Candy. Okay, we're spitballing. We're going here. <laughs> No, but uh, brainstorming, and I really would like for us to do a music video. I think that would be really cool I think if so we can. Too, by the, way. Uh, the old headboard was about it. The only video? Right, yeah. yeah. There's but another one. I did just make a little video explaining my equipment, and that is one of that's my proudest work of May 2011. <laughs> <laughs> Transylvania uh, comic. Uh, I love that one. Well, back that really back is in the like day, the oldest song, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it really is. Like many years before we were assigned or anything. And uh, Mar Marilyn Manson remixed that, and uh, he suggested a video with a goth car wash, <laughs> like wet T-shirt girls, goth girls. I'm, I'm I said I'll go keep that right here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the 21st century. Yeah. I think people were a little prudish back then. Uh, well, speaking of that, since we got you on that, uh, I just wanted to thank you for making the Knitting Factory video available for us fans. Oh, sure. Because really all we had is radical recital, and that's just audio, you know. So, uh, and it's impossible to find any quality Rasputina videos online. Uh -huh. That was really nicely filmed. Right. It, yeah. yeah, very well done. But well, you probably didn't even do that. It was probably the club or... Uh, the Knitting Factory at that time had a really great uh, filming setup, like, you know, embedded in the building and, like, all wired up and everything. And it's not there anymore, but they had that then and we got that. Awesome. Uh, is there any plans to do any new live video from Rasputina? Having a video on tour or sticking a camera in the booth? Um, no, we haven't discussed that. And uh, uh, I can just barely do, I can barely keep my head above water <laughs> without adding, adding a new uh, aspect to. Right. So we're the creatives. No. We just don't have any. We can't film and play and oh. sing all the time. Originally, Dawn, who is a celebrity podcaster in her own right of the Dawn and Drew show, uh, she came along with us and filmed a documentary. She made a really good documentary about uh, what it's like for us to tour. Mm -hmm. And then she just weaseled her way in. Then, yeah, I figured out that if you sit around long enough, they'll put you in the band. <laughs> so. Is that what you were, you were selling upstairs? Yeah. Okay, that's I Don's have movie. that. I bought that yeah. probably from you last year. Oh. Yeah, so, you're welcome. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you. you. All at the same time. <laughs> You've done a lot of covers throughout the years, uh, and when you decide to do a cover, is it a conscious tribute to your influences, or would you just like the way that this song sounds as a Rasputina sound? Um, I am touching you on the knee with my band on purpose. <laughs> okay. I try to move away. I try to move away. Um, it's not necessarily a big influence. Like this is something I've listened to, you know, since I was growing up. Uh, it might be something that I, I just heard. Uh, I asked the fans uh, what they would like to hear us play on this tour, and somebody said, Friday, I'm in love by The Cure. And I didn't grow up loving that stuff, but oh, I know that song, I love that song. I thought that was a really good idea. So ideas can come from anywhere. And then I have to be able to sing the lyrics with conviction, because some songs are really good, but the lyrics might embarrass me or be too nonsensical or have something I don't want to represent so right. lyrics have to pass the muster. Well I really noticed that on I Go to Sleep. Uh, which version were you particularly covering when you did that? Um, definitely Chrissy Hind because I did grow up listening to her and real. I think she was a big model for my singing because I grew up listening to her so much. Yeah, I could really tell the, the influences in the voice. It was really, you did a good job. Um, this is kind of a dumb question, but do you welcome the day in the future when humans have depleted all of the oil and are forced to live more like humans did in the past? I do, because I think with all our ease and everything is so easy, that's what makes the time for us to stress out and uh, be really self-involved and you know fester on problems that are not even real and if we had to uh, use our bodies just to survive a little bit more it'd be uh, I think it'd be better for everybody's head. You too? 
Yeah, learn to grow food. That's my advice. Yeah, it's always been, uh, I think that's actually happening a lot now. I think people are kind of looking to things of the past and really realizing, you know what, that was actually better. That, you know, growing our own food and, you know, having our, or growing our own herbs or things like that, you know, and, and sharing and all those kinds of things, I think it's starting to come back a little bit more again. And I think much more in agriculture than in anything else. Because I know if I had to grow my own food, I'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to learn really fast. <laughs> I'd move up to her place and we'd have a commune. We'd, we'd only grow eat food kale. together. <laughs> <laughs> or a special just, French kale. Right? Melora, you have many different voices that you expel on your albums and in live performances. And when you drop your voice down or up an octave or two, uh, it's very creepy, but very funny as well. Um, I know. <laughs> I was just wondering if, if there are any particular comedic influences in particular, or do they just come to you in your head? Um, surely there are influences, and it's probably stuff from TV in the 70s, uh, when I was a kid watching TV, um, but when I'm actively making things, I get so excited, and it does crack me up a lot too, and then I know something is good. Like, oh my god, this is so funny.